Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to this session. And uh, we are really honored uh, to be able to speak at the Open Source Summit North America. And we are very sorry that we have to change this to a virtual uh, speech uh, at the last minute uh, because our visa problem. So let's start. And our topic today is the Open Euler, uh, bringing new opportunities to the diversified computing era. And it's presented by uh, me and my colleague, Zhong Jun, and we are from the Open Euler community. Uh, the content of today's session will be divided into three parts. Uh, first, we will have a look at uh, what is the Open Euler community. And then we will go through some technical details about the community and some ideas behind them. And then Zhong Jun will take you to the behind the thing to see uh, what kind of infrastructure that we used to build up uh, the community uh, in this large scale. Uh, and before we start, please let us uh, spend a few minutes to introduce us. Uh, my name is Zheng Yuzheng. Uh, I'm from the Open Order community, and I serve uh, both as a SIG maintainer and also the community manager of the Open Order community. And here is my email. Please feel free to contact me uh, if you are have any questions or interested in the Open Euler community. Hi, everyone. I'm Zhong Jin. You can just call me Jin. I have 10 years of experience in open source development and management. Contributed to OpenStack, Kubernetes, Chaos Community, and so on. Currently, I'm an open owner, infrastructure SIG maintainer, and also be a chaos metric module working group maintainer. Let's clarify what the problem we try to resolve. There are some tough challenges for the OS industry. The first in development of chipset bring top challenges for the OS development. The chipset has been very bully in recent five years. In the future, we can forecast it. There are more and more new type of chipset will appear. So, the OS should need a more aggressive innovation to bring us to the highest and fast. So, the OS is special for the Linux system and to become bigger and bigger and behavior and higher. So our idea is how to reduce it and reduce the size, reduce to make it higher and faster. And then another gap is between the server and car and the embedded system because the Linux system is divided to be a server and the embedded in the system, there are two words. They don't think very well. So there's another challenger. So we will do some aggressive innovation or modification to resolve that kind of challenges. The open owner will unleash diversified uh, computing power to innovate enterprises. You can see it in the picture. The open owner operator system support for all devices and one OS also support for all applications. How does open owner handle the new scenarios? So over here we will have adopted this kind of way. We have the release. That's the normal way, right? We release a version two times per year. One is in the March, another in the September. Those releases we call the innovation release. You can put everything and measure and features into those kind of release. 
you can try to make us provide some environment to do the verification job. For two years, we will release RTS long-term service version. We will make sure that the quality and we will maintain the RTS for six years to ensure the company will adopt a major product. So that is the way If you want to try something new to verify some cheapest, you can go very earlier to the innovation version cycle and you can do the verification and go back to your RTS version. And so we will adopt more aggressively with release cycle to meet the aggressive with chip. We will adopt very aggressive strategy to adopt those new features. So you know a new feature is specified for some big feature. It's not easy or spend a very long time for the upstream. Then we have another important feature is we share the same code base in this point. We have released two out here for the second RTS in the 22.3 and this is very milestone version in this version no matter what you are what the true server you use at it six to create three kind of version so if you are a developer to just click to use the api and you share the same api if you are a device pro protector pro producer the driver will face the same conversion so we will reduce the gap between the usages of the new architecture okay so is that the general information how we had the the cheapest issue but it looks not a uh, aggressive right. The Open Unit community started from 2019. In 2020, the Open Unit community committee was established. In 2021, the Open Unit community donated to the Open Atom Foundation. After three years of development, the Open Unit community has grown rapidly. The number of open unit contributor has increased by four times. The number of open unit version downloads has increased by 30 times. Growth will be even more than 2023. Currently, we have more than 800 community partners joining us for community developments. Those community partners come from various industries, such as processor, server, OS, DB, and so on. Next, welcome to join you to bring us the second part of the content. Thank you, Zhongjun. Uh, let's get to the second part of this session. In this part, we would like to share some technical details about Open Euler. And this might give you some ideas about why open oil are growing so fast in China. The first reason why open oil are growing so fast is that it is not just a distro for Linux. The community is actually much more than that. It is actually an innovation platform. Developers in this community 
worked on full software stack to fulfill user requirements. Let's take our latest LTS version 22.3 as an example. In this version, we used 5.10 kernel, and the major contributor for Open Euler, Huawei, has been top two contributors to the Linux kernel for quite many kernel versions. Open Euler has also done a lot to optimize about the OS on multi-architecture computing, as there are a lot of different uh, types of chips in China. For example, we have to done some a kernel architecture optimization for large-scale ARM clusters, and some user mode protocol stack. Also some HCK decoupled control, which can provide 5% to 20% performance improvement. And now the above mentioned is still what a normal OS distro does. Let's see what else we have done. The Open Euler developers have also created some projects to overcome the challenges they faced using the current projects. For example, uh, the traditional Docker have too much overhead and the spawning time is slow in a large cluster. The Open Euler developers and users created a project called Isula, uh, with Rust to provide much more lower overhead and much lighter weight. The Isula project has already joined the CNCF landscape. They also created uh, the Stratovert project uh, in the virtualization field for the similar reasons. With more and more users start to use Open Euler, how to manage and optimize the whole cluster became a problem to the user cares. So Open Euler also incubated ONM projects with latest AI technologies. Atune is the project that can provide AI-assisted cluster tuning uh, to user services, and uh, AOPS uh, can provide AI-assisted uh, cluster operations, such as security scanning, monitoring, live patching, and much more. Open Euler has a lot of innovations also in security, uh, programming languages, uh, development tool chain, and many more. I'm not going to go through all of the details here. Uh, you are welcome to find it on the Open Euler community website if you are interested. But I guess you already got my point. The Open Euler community is not just a Linux distro. And now, let's have a look at some of the other ideas behind the Open Euler community. As mentioned, Open Euler is aimed at enterprise usage during its funding. So let's imagine this. Uh, suppose you are a cloud admin in charge of hundred thousand of machines. And it's in today's world, uh, you will be probably face huge number of different hardwares, and each of them have different architecture or features. And there could be over 40 new CVEs every week. And you and believe me, the number could only be bigger. And according to many OS strategy, the OS releases updates per month or even per week. I have to say that we are not judging on those releases. Uh, we are just taking the fact as an example. Uh, I think you feel uh, I think if you are managing a cluster like this, uh, your face would be like uh, this cat every day because all of the above-mentioned action needs to be updated on kernels. And as more and more different chips versions come into the market, the kernel is facing greater challenges. It is because that the Linux kernel is highly coupled and unchangeable. We can say that changing anything means changing everything. You have to recompile them all. It could be really complicated if you are managing a larger cluster and you have a business running on them. And in Open Euler, we come up with an idea to make everything in kernel as a service. Uh, we call it the kernel as a service or CAS. With this idea, uh, we have to redesign the driver framework 
in the old kernel and to make the drivers more isolated. And we plan to use the eBPF technology to make those modules to be flexible and reconfigurable. Such as the network services, the storage services, and the schedule services. By doing this, we will be able to provide a fundamental ability for our next step. From the above presented contents, you might already think that Open Euler is aggressive in release, in kernel, and in innovation projects. And we have introduced the idea of kernel as a service. With those fundamental abilities, we, th we are thinking about why not to become more aggressive. The idea is that why not create a universal OS platform that is usable for both data centers, edge, IoT, or embedded. If we want to do that, we have to provide abilities not only in OS itself, like in kernel and other components, but also need to have a powerful and suitable infrastructure behind the OS and the community build them in order to build up the OS that we want to create. Okay, let's first have a look at the current status of server and embedded OS and the potential gaps. In the current world, OS for embedded and server side is quite different. They, are, uh, they care about different things. Embedded and IoT cares more about things like real-time, size, uh, and others. Typical OS is like Wind River. Uh, typical building tools is like Yocto. And on the other hand, at the server side, Linux kernel is typically the dominant OS. In this side, we currently care about things like uh, virtualization and how to release compute power uh, on different architecture, like we just mentioned. Uh, currently, the main tools we use to build the OS is uh, the, from the open, OBS from the OpenSUSE community and uh, things like Koji. With the current status, uh, the industry is divided into two parts. And because of this, everyone in the OS industry will have to pay double efforts to do the compliance work, especially for the chipset vendors. Uh, if they want to compete in both scenarios, they have to do driver and optimizations for both OS types uh, as they have different packaging techniques and different dependency trees too. Also for application developers, the application cannot be deployed freely among different machines and OS platforms, also due to different build to chain and different tree. But when we step outside, the main idea for operating system is to hide the details for hardware and to provide a uniform platform for applications and users. So on this level, we do think that it could be much better if we are able to create a uniformed OS. On technical level, every OS is just a collection of packages, and with a tool chain to build all those packages, and also the OS itself. Alternatively, different OS can be thought as a distinct completion of the packages, so we can come up with an idea. The idea is that the open order can be treated as a Linux distribution and also a composed system to make OS for different scenarios. We call it the tunnel socket structure, which is used by traditional Chinese buildings. Like in the graph on the left, the base structure is solid and reliable. Uh, also small, we can just as the key component of an OS, like the kernel, the driver, and the executor. And with this base structure and a perfectly designed tool chain, we can compose different types of buildings. Like in the traditional Chinese building, we can build the forbidden city and also a small pavilion with the same basic structure. This is quite similar to our OS story. We can use the same basic components to build up OS for different scenarios. 
we have already built some OS releases with these ideas and tools. And they have already have a very large scale deployments. Zhongjun will also give some details about the building tools called Eula Maker in the next part. So with all the information I have just provided, we might have a new understanding about what is Open Euler. It is actually not only an OS distro, it is actually an OS platform which built different OSs. And the Open Euler community has optimized OS components for lighter modular designs that can run on multiple hardware platforms. And after that, Open Euler uses these components to create and uh, tailored uh, OS solutions for different solutions. Okay, uh, that will be all for the technical part. I hope you have a better understanding about what the Open Euler community is and our ideas and thoughts uh, when start this community. And now, Zhongjun will give you more details about the infrastructure behind this community. Behind the scenes, there's a lot of work have to do. For example, how to manage issues from community developers, how to manage code merging, how to manage package imports. So, we need our own infrastructures for OpenUnar community. Let's take a look at the OpenUnar infrastructure landscape. We can find there are so many excellent and the mutual projects that can be used to set up the whole infrastructure for our communities. So take a look at this one. We will use the OpenSUSE OBS that the open build service for the open source projects to build our packages and distribute our packages. We will also use the GNU mailman. Maybe you have Horizon Force as our mail list assistance. And you may also find that there are a bunch of the projects comes from the SenseF. Yes, we have the Nginx Ingress, which is used as our reverse project proxy service and there's a simple API gateways. We also use Agar CD. This is a nice tool. We use obviously this to centralize our application. We also use the vault from the HashCorp which is used as our sensitive data backend. And we will use another small tools to synchronize all the sensitive data from our vault backend or our Kubernetes clusters where in base or configuration files. And we also use the copper. So we also use so many projects that already exist in other goods open source communities, but we still do some fix or do some review or do some fix PR to upstreet open source projects. And we also build our own projects for open user community. We can see so many applications we have to use. So, how do we develop the applications in our cloud native way? There are four parts. The first part is about development standardizations. So, we need to upgrade the existing projects to make it running in Kubernetes clusters. We have to do the following several rules. The first one is about to calculate application, one process per container. 
and the second one is about Kubernetes development semantics. So we suggest our development to use Hillchar and customize to upgrade the development YAML files and output the standard log and the configuration that even added because we will use the robot package and centralize the all of the dates. That dates by our secret manager tool. And we also ask our developers to restrict to push the image. Actually, we don't use the Docker Hub because we have some tools. Our private reports, which is used to, to scan the CVS and to perform some checks before developers. We also trust the database images. For example, they are asked to use the open unit based images just because one of the packing is can be easily upgraded with some CVE issues has been fixed. And the last one is about to expose the health check endpoints. We need to restart up the applications by dedicating the health check endpoints. It will make our application more health. For the second part is about as a configuration separation. So there are three different rooms in the whole process to develop the applications to our product environment. The first room is the application developer who is responsible to write out the Docker YAML files, which is uh, not contains any details for the development. For example, they don't need to care about any namespace or some other Docker or Kubernetes resources. For the second room is uh, our developer engineer, which is used uh, to add more details to the YAML files, which contain nice or hell standards. The third part is uh, our info maintainers who is responsible for reviewing all the changes, all the applications in our communities. He is responsible to merge the pull request. So we just separate uh, those three steps and separate uh, those owner. It will make our serve application more easy. Some of the projects is based on the existing operating projects, but some of the projects is based on the ideas we learned from other open source projects. There are two cases. The first one is above. The second one is like developer robot set application. First of time, we trying to investigate the existing pro application. We found a pro application from CNCF and it's a live project. It has about 30 plugins that can be directly used in our environment. But the pro projects still have some issues and some performance problem. 
encouraging ones, the one of the plugin gets crushed. There's a hue. There's a whole Chrome application will get restarted. That's the one problem. The second is sometimes when there are huge messages comes from the code repository. When the huge message come comes, the pro application sometimes will lose the event. So. For these two problems, we have to upgrade the pro project into our own robot. Its name is Yabert, so we have to improve it for several accepts. So the Yabert now supports.、Uh, Every single plugin will be separate in the containers, and it's easy to replace. And if one of the plugins gets crashed, it will not affect the whole applications. Thanks to Zhongjun for the excellent content. Now let me bring you to another new project in the community that we are currently work on. It is called the Signal Trust. It is aimed to provide a secure and efficient solution for sending Linux packages. It is a project based on the idea of OBS sign from the OpenSUSE and added much more optimizations according to our infrastructure team's daily usage and requirements. So it can provide a much more comprehensive and efficient and cloud-native solution for package signing, which is more suitable for our scenarios. We have done some performance tests, and according to the results, our new design is much more efficient, and we are using it in open order infrastructure. I'm not going to go through all the details. But you can contact our infra team if you would like to know more. So, if you want to know more about the Open Era community, feel free to engage us with the following ways. On the left side is our social media accounts, and on the right side is our official website and ways to download and test out Open Era. So that's all for this session, and thank you all for your time and patience. I hope this is useful for you, and thanks again to the Open Source Summit to give us this opportunity. Thank you.